hi, it's Alex. Uh, apologies if I look a little bit sweaty. It's very hot today, and I don't have the AC on because I like conserving energy. I am drinking iced tea with fresh mint from my garden, which is really yummy. Today I want to talk about the topic of people talking about other people's capacity for change. And this is something that comes up a lot during arguments. I hear people say things like, Oh, you know him, he's just like that. Sometimes I hear people make generalizations about whole groups of people. Like, someone might say, Oh, you know women, they're just like this. Or, you know how men are. I really don't like these sorts of statements. For one, I think they're really untrue. I think that when people make a generalization about another person's capacity to change, they're not just making a statement about what they've observed up until this point, they're making a statement about what's ha going to happen in the future, which is something that they don't know. And unless you're omniscient, and you believe in predestination, you believe like everything's already planned out, and you happen to be the one who knows absolutely everything that's going to happen, you can't really say that with certainty. I've known people who have held certain viewpoints for a really long time, and then all of a sudden they change. Like an example would be my dad. My dad voted Republican for a number of years, and then George W. Bush came along, and he was really unhappy with some of the policies of George W. Bush, and he changed his voting pattern. He started voting for Democrats. I've heard even more pronounced examples. Like one of my friends, her grandmother went through a similar change, like she was voting for Republicans for years and years, and during George W. Bush's presidency, she was unhappy with his policies, and she ended up changing her political views. I've also seen people change religious beliefs, I've, pe I've seen people change all sorts of other beliefs. So the idea of people not changing, in general, is untrue. Now, there are times, though, when we have experience with someone, we may have interacted with them for a long, a long time, and we may have seen a pattern play out again and again. One thing I want to call on people to do, when they're talking about someone else, and they're talking about their experiences with someone, I think it's better to make a statement about your past experiences, rather than to make a statement about what someone is capable of in the future. So for example, I might say, oh, I've tried talking about this person a number of times, and they've always said the same thing to me. So that doesn't mean that they're going to say the same thing in the future, but it's just sharing my, my experience with what I have experienced. I haven't experienced the future, so I, I'm not going to talk about that yet. One reason I like focusing on what we actually have observed is that I think that when we make a statement about someone being incapable of change, we risk that becoming a self-fulfilling prophecy. Like, if I go to talk to someone, and I believe that that person is not capable of change, I'm going to approach them in a different way than if I believe that person is a dynamic person who is capable of change and growth and learning and development and such. Now, personally, I believe that all people, unless they have some sort of severe mental d disability, like Alzheimer's disease, that keeps them from forming memories, I believe that all people, for the most part, are capable of change and growth. People also, by the way, who have Alzheimer's are capable of certain types of learning, which is sort of interesting. But anyway, back to the point. If I believe that people are capable of change, I will be able to draw that out of them. I'll be more likely to talk to them in a respectful manner. So next time you hear someone saying something like, Oh, you know how he is, he's just like that, or, Oh, there's no point in talking to him about that, he's already made up his mind, he's not going to ever change his mind about that. Next time you hear someone say something like that, why don't you consider challenging them? You could try to share some of the ideas that I've said, and you could talk about the idea of self-fulfilling prophecy and point out that if you approach someone that way, it'll be more likely that they won't change and that if someone really wants to see something happen, they would do better to approach people in a more open-minded way, which means viewing the other person as being open-minded and potential, potentially open to change and growth. I hope you have gained some insight. Uh, thank you.